Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Live 605. This is Concast and Z. We've had some technical difficulties. Wouldn't be live without technical difficulties, of course, but it also wouldn't be alive without your company. If you're new here, put new in the comments below. A big cheerio to all of those people that are watching us on YouTube as well as Facebook and Twitter. Yes, we're pushing out to all these uh, platforms. Why? Because we're gluttons for punishment and we need to do this to ourselves. We need to um, run on the treadmill of technology. Today's show, today's live is a very interesting one. It's one that uh, is long overdue, but one that I have had people ask me uh, to do time and time again. It seems that this topic has been covered on numerous occasions, but apparently it hasn't been covered enough. So uh, I figured that I should um, dive in and uh, share my thoughts on this particular, and also the accepted wisdom. I'm not suggesting for any moment now, for, for, you know, at, at all, that I am the person that would be providing that uh, that wisdom. It is the accepted wisdom. Uh, people that are far more experienced than myself um, have uh, commented on this particular topic. So I hope it is of interest to you. And if it is, just say hello below. So as I know that I'm actually going out live to everyone and not just talking to myself. This could be happening. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what we're going to talk about today is brush shedding. It is an issue. It is a, a, an issue that has, um, uh, you know, troubled people time and time again. And it's one of those things that, um, you know, uh, creates a lot of um, uh, angst for people. They think, oh, my God, what's happened? I've I bought a dud brush. I've spent all this money on, on, on you know, purchasing a really good brush. And it's shedding. It's falling apart. What is going on? Why do brushes shed? Why do people go bald? Perhaps a bit of genetics. Maybe there's a bit of environment involved in there. Um, so that's what we're going to look at. Uh, Fernando. Hello, Fernando. Fernando was joining us on uh, YouTube, which is fantastic. I'm glad you could uh, you could join us. Uh, hello. Yes. <laughs> there you go. So uh, clearly, we are going out um, with, you know, with all these technical problems. Um, you'll note that I'm not in my usual place again. Um, I've decided that would probably, it's better off um, that we do these shows a little bit earlier. Uh, I know some people preferred them later. But of late, as I said, you may remember that we've had some rain and inclement weather and the roads are blocked and they're on a, you know, sort of traffic control um uh, schedule and last, I think it was last Friday, it took me three hours to get home. No thanks, I don't want to be a part of that. Um, uh, David, hello from North Carolina. Hello, David. Nice of you to join us on the um, on the live, sir. I uh, it's very very kind of you to uh, uh, to do that. That's um, it's really really nice. Thank you. So we're going to talk about. Um, brushes, brushes shedding, and um, if this is a thing, uh, let me know. I'd like to hear about your experiences uh, with shedding brushes. Um, quite often what happens is a, a person will purchase a brush and within a very short space of time, it will start to lose quite a bit of, of hair. And um, we're going to look at this phenomenon from a technical perspective, and then we'll talk about what we can do um, to uh, ameliorate your concerns, help alleviate any problems that you may have. I want to start by showing you a, well, a graph. You know I love my graphics. Uh, this may go some way into explaining a number of things. I'll show you the graph and then I will talk to it and hopefully it will make uh, clear sense. Uh, this particular graph that I'm going to show you, it, it's a it's, uh, it shows a very, very interesting curve, and this curve um, is is widely used uh, in reliability engineering and also in deterioration modeling. And let's face it, if you're getting a brush that is falling apart, reliability is a word that comes to mind, or lack thereof, and also what happens over time with um, this expected deterioration. So without further ado, let me show you this graph. Uh, this is uh, what they call a bathtub curve for obvious reasons. It looks like a, a bathtub, um, as you can see. And 
the curve, as I said, is widely based um, and, and used in reliability engineering and deterioration modeling. Now, it describes a particular form of function which basically occurs in three stages, as you can see there. When you purchase the brush, um, then you will see that at, at the, the, as soon as you take it out of the um, out of its out of its box, there's no shedding at all. And then, um, or if there's likely to be any shedding, you'll get it when you first when you first buy this product. Uh, it will shed for probably I don't know three or four shaves, possibly five. Uh, sometimes it may shed for eight shaves, and then it'll go into what's called a useful life period, which means this is the normal life of the brush. So you buy it, and then there's a decreasing failure rate. In other words, the brush still does what it's supposed to do. It functions the way it is supposed to function and until we enter that second flatter part of the, the bathtub curve. And here, this is a constant failure rate or random failures. You might get a random failure here and there, which means you might get the odd air coming out of your brush here and there, but it should not happen for the lifetime of the brush. What is the lifetime of the brush, I hear you ask? It could be five years, it could be 15 years, and if you look after your brush carefully, it, there's no reason why it couldn't be 25 to 30 years. In the third part of that graph, to the, to the right of that graph, uh, we start to see an increasing failure rate. Now, this is also called the normal wear out phase. So you'll see that to the right there, it is to be expected that the, the brush will, after a period of time, start to lose hairs again. So it's either going to lose it when you first purchase the brush and use it for the first three or four or five or six times, right? That's to be expected. Then there will be a period of very, very flat, no shedding period. You might get random hairs coming off the brush. That's to be expected. And we'll talk about what some of those things might be, why you, you know, you're likely to get that sort of shedding. Uh, to occur. And then towards the end of the life of the brush, uh, and again, that depends on your use and depends on your experience with the brush. It depends on how you use the brush, uh, how frequently you use the brush, then you would expect it to start to lose hairs again. I have had people bring in their brushes and some of them look like they don't look good. Okay. They, they look, they look um, a little tired. Some of them still came in and they were a little bit wet and tired. So, um, yes, it all depends. It depends on user case and your particular mileage or your particular carnage may vary. It depends. It depends on what you do. So, you purchase a brush like so. You expect it to work really, really well. And then the next thing you know is it starts to shed. Like, I don't know if you can see that. There's a few little shedders there. You, can, you might be able to see that. A few little hairs coming off there. Okay. Um, so you think, okay, those are a few loose hairs. I'll cop that. That's fine. Um, but you shouldn't be copying it for more than five or six or seven shapes. If you do, please contact um, the, the manufacturer or the, purchase, the person that you purchased the, the brush from. And I'm sure that yours is not the first case they've seen. They will try and get it swapped out for you and assist you in that way. So um, that's, that can happen. Uh, what have we got here? Graph also possibly shows the discomfort made of taking a bath too hot, just right, not too. Yes, absolutely. The the Goldilocks effect, the not too hot, not too cold, but the just right effect. So, as I say, you're going to have you're going to have problems with the brush shedding. It's going to happen in the very beginning, obviously. I mean, there's nothing astounding about that, um, but it shouldn't continue to happen beyond. You know, I, I think. Um, if you're losing, I don't know, say eight or nine hairs every time you shave for five or six shaves, it may be time to call the person, the business that you purchased it from, or but even the, the, the brush manufacturer and just say, look, I've got a problem here. I'm losing hair at a great rate of knots. I can relate to this, of course. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there that can relate to it as well. Um, in that case, the, you know, the brush needs to be replaced. Now, um, why does this happen? Well, uh, it does happen with synthetic brushes, but it, uh, typically you find that it occurs with animal hair brushes. Animal hair brushes are a natural 
product. They're an organic product. Um, and it uh, is one of those things that, uh, because of the way it was manufactured, because of, you know, animal hair has to be brought together and they put it in a little collar and then they, they, they bring together all the fibers and usually put them in a resin plug, which looks something like this, right? So if you can imagine these hairs were put together and then set in this particular resin. Um, and they've got to sit like that in a brush handle. Now, if for any reason there are some hairs that are shorter than others, they're going to come out. They'll, they'll pop out. So that's usually why um, you might get those in the first few shapes. Uh, the other thing is, and this is very important, I mean, uh, I, I think, you know, I'll put some notes up just so as you know, the knot quality is very important. If you don't have a good quality knot to start with, uh, in other words, if the manufacturer hasn't utilized the best possible knot they can for that brush, they may not be selling it as a top knot, you know, uh, brush. They might just say, look, this is a cheap and cheerful budget brush, so don't expect too much from it. Um, so knot quality obviously is very, very important. Uh, the other thing is that the manufacturing process and how the knots are stored. Uh, if you're storing these knots in an environment that's quite um, unstable, where, you know, sometimes it's getting hot and cold and wet in particular, an environment, you know, water, moisture is a, is a real problem, then that is going to have um, some saying in the integrity of the knot and how, how it keeps its fibres together. Uh, so the manufacturing process and the knot quality are very, very important. These are things, obviously, that are common sense. And, of course, then it's user um, uh, care and, you know, how you how you actually use the brush, uh, whether you like splaying the brush. There are a lot of people that like to splay and really, really get in there and, um, you know, try and get a, a real, uh, I don't know what the fascination is with all of that. But anyway, it's, um, uh, I have, I remember when I first, there you go, oh, look, there you go. There's some hairs there, if you can see them, they're just... It's incredible. They're just all falling out as we speak. Um, I remember when I first got into shaving with a brush, I'd really get in there and give it a good scrub. You don't need to do that. Uh, you, know, just, you don't need to do that. Just um, take care of the brush. Taking care of the brush could also mean um, cleaning it frequently with, a, with a, a brush cleaner or some very, very mild detergent, which will remove the soap scum, which also you know, assists in the longevity of the brush. Um, these things are very, very important. Uh, and also making sure that the brush dries uh, as, as, as much as it possibly can. Uh, look, the debate about whether you should hang your brush up or not, I did a video many, many years ago. Please don't go and watch it. I, I urge you not to go and watch it. Um, where I said that uh, part of uh, you know, taking care of a brush um, meant that you should... Uh, you know, hang it up, hang it on and put it up on a, on a stand. Now, stands are very nice. They're all great. Um, and, of course, the idea behind putting it on a stand is that the gravity will then draw and wick the water away. Quite often when you have a very thick brush, now let me get rid of this very nice graphic, quite often when you have a very thick knot, thick brush like that, um, no matter what you do, water will stay in the knot, Okay. And no amount of gravity is going to bring that water out. It needs to be aired out. Airing the brush is more important than hanging it upside down. So the debate about whether you should have your brush hanging upside down or the right way up or whatever is uh, it's contentious. I have come to change my view on this. Um, uh, yeah, I like hanging my brushes up, but, but I don't know that you know um, megalitres of water is coming out of them. And that has to do with the cohesive forces of, the, of, of water, how it attaches itself to the brush. More importantly, is to really give it a good, a good dry on a towel. Make sure you try and wick away, physically wick away as much of the water as possible, and then leave it out in a, in a place where it can air itself out. And of course, that also depends on the season that you're in, where you live, whether you live in an environment that's very, very dry, or whether you live in a very humid environment. Again, your particular case will vary depending on all of those things. Uh, we've got a comment here. Uh, yes, I've had my Samoag bore brush three years. It didn't shed until recently. Interesting. So this is the third phase, David, of that 
um, that deterioration that, that is to be expected. Again, um, perhaps you wanted your brush to last 13 years or, or so. Some brushes do. Um, there are variations. There are very. I, I know no matter how much a brush manufacturer tries to bring in uh, all, it tries to eliminate those variables which are going to create an inconsistent product. They try as hard as they as they can to manufacture at scale or produce. And I'm talking about large companies such as Samoog. Um, uh, but also at the same time, um, you know, so produce a high number of products, but also make sure that there is a level of quality assurance. Three years for a bore brush. Now, bore brushes tend to go through quite a bit. And they're the first, in my experience, uh, with, and with what I've seen with people and what they've bought into the store, uh, people that to people tend to hold on to bore brushes probably a little longer than they should. I have held on to a couple of bore brushes of mine for sentimental reasons. Quite often, a lot of people have had them handed down from their father or their grandfather or whatever, because that was typically the, the brush of choice in those days. Um, so, uh, but in that instance, I tend not to use the brush anywhere near as much, or in fact, I retire the brush, I put it away, and I just keep it and admire it on the shelf. I, I don't use it. Um, barbers love bore hair brushes because they're inexpensive and they can go through them. They're, they're not, you know, if, if they're dropping $120, let's say, for a badger hair brush and using it on their customers, which is another debate again, um, then when it comes time to replace the brush, they're replacing a $120 object as opposed to one that may have cost them $15, $20. In fact, you get bore brushes for $10. And price in that instance, you do get what you pay for. So you've got to be really be careful about all of that. Um, so is it normal for a Samoa brush three years? Uh, probably not. I'm just wondering, David, when you say it sheds, is it continually shedding now or you've just noticed lately that you've just lost a couple of hairs um, and that's it? I'd like to know. That'd be interesting um, to hear. Look, it sounds about right. Um, with a bore brush, yeah, bore brushes start off being quite firm, have a lot of backbone, and then they sort of soften and, and do what bore brushes do oh so beautifully. And that is a reward the user with, you know, just... But you've got to look after them, and they are more than likely to retain uh, water in the knot, which will, over time, if the water sits in there, as I said, um, it deteriorates this plug, and then it may start to give off its hairs. It may say, look, it's time, uh, you know, it's time that we uh, said goodbye. We parted ways. Uh, that is, um, is, is has been my experience. So... A couple of things, borax, uh, a lot of people like using borax, a boric um, acid solution, just turn it into a paste and rub it into the into the brush, leave it and then wash it out, rinse it thoroughly. That uh, ensures that you're not going to have a buildup of any um, uh, fungal or bacterial uh, material there, which could also weaken the integrity of the, of the, of the knot and then also have it shed. Sometimes knots snap rather than coming off at the plug there, they will snap halfway. It's, you know, like half of it will snap. Um, if that's happening after having had the brush for some time, then my immediate feeling on that is to make sure you clean it. Because what happens is that when it comes in contact with shaving creams and soaps, um, you use the brush, it, it uh, dries, with the soap scum, ever, ever so thin film of, you know, it can be very, very sort of thin um, uh, coating on the, on the, on the fibres and uh, it dries, it gets wet, dries, gets wet, more product, and then all of a sudden it snaps, you know, midway. Um, that probably has to do more with, um, with keeping, you know, with keeping your brush in tip-top shape uh okay so david has said that it's a few hairs after each shave yeah me thinks uh david that you're probably in that third phase of normal wear out on your um on the brush unfortunately yes an engineer would tell you that uh, according to de deterioration modeling uh 
um, and reliability of the, of the product, you're in that third phase and your failure rate, uh, unfortunately, is just going to increase uh, with, um, uh, now with the age of the brush. It's just one of those things. Peg Leg has joined us. So, uh, only shaving brush I have is a 1928-42 Mohawk 338 bore brush, but I know how it feels when you get old, the hair goes. Yes, I know, my friend, it does go. Yeah, um, look, and some bore brushes do look very, very tired. They look like they've been, uh, they may have even been to the bore wall. It's a pun. Sorry about that. Um, yes, uh, it's it's just one of those things. Michael, thanks for joining us on the live. Michael says he keeps the glue plug out of the hot water, whatever brush I'm using and haven't had a problem with shedding. I need to clear my favorite two-band brazier. Yes, you do, Michael. Um, I think it's a good idea. Yes, um, that's another thing. Uh, I've seen people put, you know, they put their entire brush in the water. If I'm going to soak a brush, I'm only going to soak it to, to there and... Um, really wring it out uh, of course if it's a if it's a synthetic br brush I don't soak it at all but these animal hair brushes um, uh, clearly they require a little bit more care and uh, you that will that will ensure longevity um, so that's it really I think um, I, I think those things if you're just you know mindful of those particular things you should be able to um, have the brush last. Uh, also combing out, um, I, I like to sort of detangle the brush from time to time. Um, and so what I do is I I use a brush cleaner, a detergent. Um, I will not be going into a shameless plug of the amazing brush cleaner that we carry here. I would, but I'm not. Um, and Soak it for half an hour, then I let it dry, then I detangle, then I go back and wash it again and get rid of any other material that's there. Uh, but that also assists in that. But keeping the brush dry um, and using it. Look, as I said to you earlier, when I first started with wet shaving and, and with brushes, I really gave the brushes a... a real workout I was sitting there rubbing and it was like it was uh, you know I was treating it like it owed me money or something and and that's and that ended up uh, costing me money because I would destroy the brush as you get a little bit older of course you know that's about the 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 you know using a technique um uh, you know taking your time with it you don't need to um you know you're not beating an egg or anything like that or you shouldn't be anyway not with a shave brush and then I found that the brushes were able to. So you got to you learn how to uh, keep the brush in tip top shape, and that of course assists um, in in extending the life extending the life of that particular um, you know, useful life period of um, the brush. Now you'll note there that I didn't put any figures there because it's all arbitrary. Um, that first shedding failure rate. It could be five shaves. It could be ten shaves. That middle period there of the the what they call the useful life period, where you might get a random hair or two shedding. I mean, that could be anywhere from three years to fifteen years to twenty years. Uh, but if it's twenty years, I suspect you're probably only shaving with it once every every once in a while. Right, so um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them below. Um, I, are you, do you use a, a brush holder? Do you think that that's an important part of keeping your, your brush dry or is it a bit of a gimmick? I mean, it keeps the brush kind of neat and tidy and over there on, on the, um, you know, on the, on, on the shelf or whatever, but does it have any real function in, in keeping your, your brushes dry. I am guilty as charged. I've changed my opinion or I've kind of modified my opinion. I'm, I'm not suggesting that there is absolutely no, um, uh, you know, benefit in, in hanging your brushes. But um, the amount of water that you would want wicking out of that brush, I think can be assisted more by using a towel and to physically run the towel 
over over the, um, the, the the hairs and to try and draw out as much water as possible and then keeping it in an airy place. Don't put it away in your shaving cabinet um, or you'll have uh, you'll have uh, some difficulties. Uh, Dave is on the live as well. The bathtub scale is used for my personal head of hair. The useful period was not long enough. Yes. Yes, uh, Dave. I remember those days. Look, I think hair is largely overrated, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm quite happy with what I have now. Um, I, I save a lot of money in in um, in barber fees, barbering fees, although I do miss the camaraderie, the, 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 you know, going into a barber shop and having discussions and shooting the breeze and having discussions. But yes, I can relate to you. Uh, the bathtub scale, um, as I said, is a general is a, is a general um, uh, curve that's used for all, all manner of things. Um, hair loss may be one of them. Not only you know losing losing hair on a brush. Uh, I think it's probably time we did a, a quick uh, product spotlight. We'll do a quick product spotlight, and um, and then we'll wrap up the live. <laughs> Yes, in today's uh, product spotlight, I have uh, uh, proudly an Australian product. Um, it is this Lucumar Balm, which I absolutely love. It comes in this sort of retro tin. It's fantastic stuff. Um, it's a balm. Now, look, I've got to say, it, I mean, it's a, it's a lanolin-based, an anhydrous lanolin-based product, um, which is great. I like this for particular formulation because of how it feels at room temperature. So you don't need a blowtorch to soften it and then, you know, apply it uh, and all the rest of it. Uh, this is pretty pretty good straight out of the can. I love it. I love the scent. Uh, the reason I wanted to bring this to your attention is that there have been some, and I've been, I myself have, have also questioned um, just how good products are when they can do more than one thing. You know, that three in one thing or the two in one thing. Why don't you just stick to what just stay in? But sometimes WD-40 is better and, and is good for more than just one thing. Um, this is not WD-40 in a can, but what it is, is a beautiful balm that you can put in your goatee or beard and style it. It'll give you a, a nice light hold. Um, it's also good if you've got tattoos. It keeps the ink nice and vibrant. And of course, it is uh, provides a nice moisturizing um, uh, layer for your skin. So it's pretty good. It's good for guys that have beards, goatees, and all the rest of it. Um, it's made in Australia, 16 bucks. It'll last you a long, long time. Um, oh, it's, like, it's got like a frankincense sense. It's, it's, it's really, really nice. They also do it as a general balm, which isn't designed for um, the uh, for beards in particular. But it's great for hands and elbows and feet and whatever. If you're walking around with, if you walk around in sandals all day or barefoot, um, then you know that sometimes your your heels may require some attention. If they do, check out this Lucumar, uh, proudly Australian product. Um, we do ship them overseas if required as well. Uh, I love the tin because you can use it again and again. And this was one of the decisions that the manufacturers made. They said, no, we wanted to put it in a, in a container that can be reused. Reminds me of the mint container. Anyway, it's, it's quite nice. It's, 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 it's got that sort of real, um, that really nice sort of retro feel about it. You know, there's no coincidence. People want to go back to, they want to go back to, to, to products that are, you know, that come in containers that can be utilised for more than just its single use, intended use. Uh, you could use that for all sorts of things. I don't know, safety pins, drawing pins, nuts, bolts, um, part of an engine chassis or whatever it is that you're doing. If you're, a, if you're into modelling or whatever, um, then you can use, you know, that for all your bits and pieces. Uh, I... Thoroughly recommended. It's a good product. It really does work. Um, and it comes in uh, a couple of sizes as well. Won't set you back more than, as I said, sort of start. They start at $16 and go up to about $24.95. Very inexpensive given the current state of play that we are in. Well, that was Product Spotlight. <laughs> 
Yes, David has told us that, uh, going back to the brush thing, it's the only, I only use the same brush. Okay, well, David, that in that case, three years with uh, a Samoog brush, I think is pretty damn good. I think it's very, very good. If that is the only brush that you use, then um, you, you're doing very, 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 very well. Uh, Samoogs are uh, quite reasonably priced. Um, they're very approachable. They're, they're, they're quite a... Um, uh, a, a good brand, a reputable brand that comes out of Portugal. And I think if that's all you've been using and you're only starting to bash it after three years, and I'll assume that you shave every day. So if you're using the brush every day or even every other day, let's say every 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 other day or every two or three days, then that's a pretty good thing. I mean, um, should you be looking at another brush? I don't know. Uh, that, of course, is entirely up to you. But thanks for sharing that, David. Uh, shot in the Dark has said, uh, they've taken a shot in the dark here and said that it's a good show. Thank you. I really appreciate your very kind words. That's uh, very kind of you. Well, uh, the time has come for me to get out of your faces and to allow you to reclaim your bandwidth um, and do uh, what it is you normally do. David tells me, so it's David daily. There it is. It's in black and white daily. That's how often he uses the brush. I think you've done a remarkable job there. But I think three years daily on the same ball brush, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Anyway, time has come for me to go. As I said, we'll see you in the next live. Thanks for watching. Take care.